Hello children, how are you? I am Masood Fatima, you know, and I am going to teach you social studies. Now, uh, we have to complete the portion of third term. Okay, and um, the chapters which are to be uh, taught are chapter 12. 13, 14, 15, 16. We'll do five chapters. Not all together, today only. Today I'll do chapter 12. Okay? I'll teach you chapter 12. That is our environment. Okay? So, open your book on page number 83. Okay? As usual, first of all, I will read the first paragraph. And then I will hand to hand explain it. Okay. And um, please pay attention children. Okay. So now let's start a chapter 12. Our environment. I hope you are ready. Huh? Open your book. Okay. Now I am going to read it. Chapter 12. Our environment. Environment refers to the natural world of air, water, land, etc. where human beings, animals and plants live. It comprises the circumstances, objects or conditions by which one is surrounded. So this was the introduction to our environment. Okay, now what is environment? Just now I read that it refers to the natural world of air, water, land, etc. Means environment is the surrounding or condition in which a person, um, animal uh, or plant live okay? or operates. Okay. In easier words, we can say that everything that surrounds us is collectively called as the environment. Okay? It acts as a life support system for us. Okay? Because why? Why it is uh, like a life support system? Because it is from the environment we get food to eat, air to breathe, water to drink and all other requirements of a daily life. Okay, I hope you have understood what does environment mean. Okay, the surroundings or condition in which a person, animal or plant lives. Okay, so... Now the, sec the first heading, this was the introduction. Now the first heading of this chapter is components of the environment. Okay, the factors. So environment, first of all I will read about the components. Okay, environment includes both biotic and abiotic components. Every living being is highly dependent on environment for its survival because it provides conditions for the growth and development of all living organisms. Now, the biotic components, I am going to read about biotic components and then I will explain it to you. Okay, Biotic components refer to the living things like human beings, animals, plants, etc. On the one hand, biotic components include autotrophs, that is organisms that make their food directly from the environment, for example, plants. On the other hand, they include heterotrophs, that is organisms that depend on plants and animals for food. For example, human beings and animals are heterotrophs. 
okay now in biotic components two streams are found that is what one is autotrophs and the um, other one is heterotrophs okay heterotrophs but um, sorry uh, autotrophs see environment is mainly divided into two streams just now i told you this that is what biotic and abiotic okay now biotic components what is biotic components biotic components uh, relates or results from living organism means it refers to the living things like human beings or the plants and animals that is biotic and in biotic only two streams are there okay that is autotrophs and heterotrophs Hetero, uh, autotrophs auto means self okay and trophs means nutrient means they search all the nutrients by themselves and they make their own food like plants they do not depend on others to serve them so autotrophs in hindi we can say swamposhi okay so uh, just now i told you that auto means self and trophs means nutrients means organisms that make their own food directly directly from the environment and what are those those are plants you have studied na photosynthesis ah uh, plants use sunlight uh, carbon dioxide water minerals and make their food and the other stream is heterotrophs means the organism that derives its nutritional requirements from uh, different different organic substances like human beings and animals we depend on plants plants do not depend on us we depend animals depend on plants so we are heterotrophs and plants are autotrophs okay because they make their own food they do not depend on us to make food for them but animals animals depend on plants we depend on plants and uh, animals both okay so in that way plants are autotrophs example of autotrophs okay and uh, human beings and animals are examples of what heterotrophs okay now comes the uh, abiotic factors okay abiotic factors include non living things okay just now i'm going to read here see on the same page page 83 abiotic components include non living things like land water and air just now i told you this uh, land is the solid surface of the earth on which human beings animals and plants live water is found on earth surface below the earth surface and even in the air in the form of water vapor air is found in the atmosphere so just now i told you that uh, abiotic components they include non living things like land water and air okay and just to summarize just to summarize the components of environment we can say that they are biotic and abiotic two okay and two types biotic include all living components like plants animals human beings or you can say all flora and fauna this term i have used in the previous chapter also okay flora means all plants and fauna means all uh, this thing animals okay and 
abiotic they include non living factors okay like land water light temperature humidity atmosphere uh, acidity soil pressure and sun okay so this is the difference one is related to living things and the other one is related to non living things okay now the next topic is interdependence between the different regions of the world so let's do this first of all i will read it now see people all over the world are interdependent and interconnected countries depend on each other which creates global interdependence some countries have a well developed industrial sector but are not good at agriculture on the contrary some countries have a well developed agricultural sector but are not good at manufacturing things the countries which have a good industrial sector export industrial products and import agricultural products on the other hand countries good at agriculture import industrial items and export agricultural products today globalization influences the economic activities of the different countries of the world okay now i hope it's uh, written in easier words in simple words what is interdependence means one country depending on the other country now like uh, india india is an agricultural country very good at uh, agriculture okay like uh, china china is very good at uh, manufacturing things okay very good at manufacturing things see the toys and all you must have seen all the electronic goods so they are very good at manufacturing and uh, in um, so agriculture is a vital is an important element for the world for what for livelihood it's because of uh, um, food agriculture means growing crops farming where farming is done so india is good at farming or agricultural country it is same is uh, us and brazil and china also but china is good at manufacturing also okay so um china and uh, japan they have left uh, us behind okay and uh, earlier us used to have the world's largest manufacturing sectors but now china overtook it so china is very good at manufacturing goods this way india is dependent on china and china on india for agriculture for import and export of that same way the countries which are good at uh, um, this thing well developed uh, agricultural countries good at agriculture they export their um, agricultural items and the countries that are good at uh, manufacturing goods they import that so this import and export affects the economic condition of the different countries in the world okay so this way interdependence uh, between uh, different regions of the world is good also it gives a positive impact okay so that's all for this chapter and uh, this chapter 12 means two topics i have done and now the 
next topics i'll do in my next video okay till then children thank you very much and bye okay please pay attention uh, watch the video very carefully and try to understand okay thank you